that's included in the pattern for both 45 and 54 or 60 inch fabric. Um, there are times that you might not want to follow the cutting layout exactly. Um, some examples of that are, in this instance, uh, this denim that I'm using isn't actually 45 inches wide, it's 42 inches wide, which is slightly unusual, but sometimes you'll find that you'll end up with a piece of fabric that isn't um, quite the width that you think it is, and so you might need to modify um, your cutting layout to accommodate this. It means I'm going to use a bit more fabric than called for in the pattern. Um, other instances are if you're using up scraps and you want to, you know, cut around um, fabric you've already cut out, or sometimes you can be the most efficient by opening your fabric up entirely and cutting everything on a single layer, squishing it as close to the other pieces as possible. Um, but following the layout in the pattern is usually a pretty good place to start. To lay out your pattern, um, you want to make sure that you're laying things on grain. And so each pattern piece has the grain line marked. And you want to make sure that this grain line is parallel to the selvage. So an easy way to do that is um, you make sure that your fabric is um, laying flat and that both selvages are meeting each other. And then you can place a pin in one end of the grain line, um, measure the distance from the selvage to that pin, which in this case is five and a quarter, and then go to the other end of the grain line and you can rotate the pattern, um, move it a little bit until the other end is also the same distance away from the selvage, which again is five and a quarter in this specific example. And then you can pin into your grain line marker there. So now I know that I have this pattern piece is laid out um, exactly um, in line with the grain. And that's going to be, you know, noticeable. You know, you know it's noticeable in garments because it affects how things hang. Um, it's will also be noticeable if you're really off grain in a thing like a big bag because the fabric does hang, it does have drape. Um, and so it's, it's always a good practice to make sure that you're cutting things on the grain. Um, in this instance, you can see my fabric has um, a, a visible print in it. it, so it is a patterned fabric, so it is you know even more important to make sure I'm in the grain because um, it'll be really obvious if my stripes aren't going, um, <laughs> aren't going the, uh, the right direction. And one thing I do want to point out is that my fabric is not directional, which means it looks the same um, with either way pointing up. So this way can be pointing up or this way can be pointing up. It doesn't matter um, in this example. It's not directional. If you're using directional fabric, um, you do want to be extra careful when you lay things out that you are laying them out so that they are pointing the right direction. So if I lay the purse um, body so that this direction is pointing up when I lay out you know, the insets, I want to make sure that the same direction is pointing up. And that's something that you want to pay attention to, especially if you're deviating from the pattern layout suggested in the instructions. One other little hint is if you're working with a square piece um, or even just a smaller piece and you're laying it out closer to the folded edge or you know just far away from the selvage, um, one thing that you can do, um, particularly, this is particularly for fabrics that have a noticeable print in them, um, especially a stripe that has a very straight line in this print, I can actually line up my um, you know, in this example, it's a pocket piece, although um, this pocket would be cut from the lining, not from the fashion fabric. I'm showing it as an example, so don't, don't actually cut this piece from your fashion fabric. But um, as the example, if you have a stripe that you can match it up with, you know, I can line this pattern up so that I am aligning it with this visible stripe um, in the fabric and don't have to measure all the way to the selvage. Um, this works 
you know, again, if you have a striped pattern um, or some very, you know, clearly um, clear print that is clearly parallel to your selvage, um, and it uh, it's important that your that print is actually truly parallel to the selvage. So sometimes, you know, in this um, denim, I know it is because it is woven in this pattern is actually woven into the fabric, so I know that this weave is running exactly parallel to the selvage. Sometimes you will get a, p a piece of fabric that has been printed, you know, with ink on top of a fabric, and that print um, can be, you know, a little off from your grain line. So then you actually have to make the decision, are you lining things up with the uh, selvage, so the actual grain line of the fabric, or are you going to line things up with the print? If they're super off from each other, I just don't recommend using that fabric. <laughs> um, but if they are, you know, really close, you you can actually, you know, use the print um, that's in that fabric to line things up instead of the selvage. But in this case, you know, I don't have to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lay out my pattern pieces and cut them out and then I will get back to you. So go ahead and get all of your pieces cut out. For both view A and view B, that means cutting two uh, front backs, two of the bottom side pieces, and then for view A, uh, there is the smaller insert um, which won't be gathered into the final bag, and you need two of those. And for view B, it's the larger insert that will have its top edge gathered to fit into the bag, and so you need two of those for view B. The handles are also a little bit different. So for view A, where we're not using hardware, there is, um, you need to cut one of the view A top pieces, and you need to cut one of the view A bottom pieces. For view B, where we are going to have hardware, you will cut two of the handle pieces and uh, two of the anchor pieces, the handle anchor. For the lining, uh, we need to cut both view A and view B, um, use the same two front and back, and two of the side and bottom pieces, and they have the same pockets as well. So if you want to do, you know, it's, you can totally leave off the pockets if you don't feel as confident in your zipper insertions or you don't feel like you want pockets go ahead and leave them off, um, but it's the same pockets for view A and B. And for that, we need to have um, one piece of the large pocket bottom, one piece of the large pocket top, and one of the smaller pocket. To sew the pocket with um, a fully, fully finished seams inside and out, we're going to need twice as many pocket pieces. So that's two of the pocket bottom, two of the pocket top, and two of the small inner pocket. After we've cut our fabric, we wanna cut out our interfacing. So regardless of what weight fabric you're using, um, you're going to want to cut interfacing for your uh, strap pieces for the um, handles of the purse. So that's going to give it extra stability in a place where the purse, you know, takes lots of wear and tension. If you're using a mid-weight um, fabric that doesn't, that has a drape, a fabric that has drape, or something that you just don't feel like is sturdy, as sturdy as you want your purse, you can cut interfacing um, for the body pieces as well. And so, as I've said in the very beginning, I'm going to sew view A um, with 
uh, the same fabric as view B, but I'm going to interface view A so you can see how um, extra bit of weight and stiffness affects the final bag. So if you are interfacing the main body of your fabric, you are going to want to cut out two pieces of interfacing for your um, purse front and back and you can go ahead and fuse those right away so um, you want to get them all lined up um, you don't want to use pins when you're getting your um, when you're applying interfacing to fabric because you don't want to melt the interfacing onto your pins but you can see that I have just gone ahead and cut the interfacing piece just like I cut the fabric piece and I'm going to get it all lined up um, in place. It's all lined up and then I can go ahead and fuse this. So you will fuse to the front back. You will also want to cut out interfacing for each of the side bottom pieces and do the same thing. You can, you know, line up the interfacing and get it all even. And then we're going to apply the interfacing to the back of each side bottom or both. I guess I say both because there's two pieces. Um, and again, this isn't necessary. Um, I have sewn with a variety of fabrics, sewn the same purse, and you know, used interfacing in some and not in others, and sometimes use the same fabric with and without. So um, some of it comes down to aesthetics. If you like having sort of a stiff, firmer shape, or if you want it, to, you know, then you want to use interfacing. Um, if you really like the slouchy, you know, hobo style, it is a hobo style purse, um, then you don't necessarily need to apply interfacing. So. Um, you will also want to cut out interfacing for the inserts. So those are the, if you are interfacing your whole purse, it is the front back, the side bottoms, and the inserts. Regardless of whether you're, as I said, regardless of whether you're interfacing the whole purse, you're going to want to interface your straps. And these, um, you don't want to interface immediately don't just go fuse these on. We need to do a little bit of sewing. Sew the interfacing to the uh, purse handles before we fuse them.